All right, so now we have a fully routed board here. Um, hopefully yours went well also. Um, look at the 3D view, pretty fun. Um, yeah, and so just a reminder that um, all of this was based on the data sheet of this IC. So be sure you're referring to that for basically anything you're doing. I went back and looked at the data sheet for this chip and found that I was pretty much right the first time, but I still didn't like it. So I ended up just connecting them with a large trace. Um, I know actually from experience with this chip that those will bridge solder. So I'm, I'm actually not real sure what to do about that. Um, but in any case, um, yeah, so you'll notice on the top layer, I've, as much as possible, and it's not exclusively true, but for the most part, I've gone vertical, and on the bottom layer, we're mostly uh, horizontal. Um, not entirely, but mostly. Um, you want to try to do that. Not, not necessarily top being vertical, bottom being horizontal, but one should be mostly one, and one should be mostly the other. That makes your routing a little easier. I try to do as much on the top layer as possible before going to the bottom layer. Um, and that seems to work out great. Uh, so we currently still have our some of our polygons shelved. So let's um, go restore them. And then everybody's green. So let's uh, re-pour all. Great. Um, and you can see the hint of those in the 3D view. Okay. So we're just going to do a few more things. Um, Firstly, we're going to go to our top overlay. We're going to put down um, um, this is the Altium Tutorial V1.0. So we got got a board name there, and then I of course want to put my my own name. Um, and I always like to do the current um, month and year. Okay. And then there's other things you can do just to make people's lives easier. So you could come through and do, you know, ground on all of your ground test points or, or in the case of, say, this test point, it's 3.3 volts. You definitely want to do that. Um, it's good to label the function of things. So like if we came through and said that this was the J tag, um, that would be good to know. Um, just use any useful information you can manage to fit. If there's any open real estate where useful information can be added, it's always nice to do that. Um, you could even go so far as to add the model numbers of some of the ICs you're using. So we could um, put, say that right there, and we could put, um, we could put this somewhere right there. So yeah, it's good to add self screen information where possible. And you can also, um, if you have a logo, and I'll pull mine in in a second, um, it's a bit hard, but make sure you're on the top overlay layer. If you have a logo, it needs to be, it needs to have a transparent background, I think. Either that or it needs to be a contrasting background. So if the logo is black, the background needs to be white. Um, that might be the case, but for sure it works if the background is transparent and um, the, the logo itself is just a solid color, like black, basically a bitmap. And um, uh, you can have it open in like Word. It, for some reason, it's very fond of the Office um, programs. So if you have it open in Word, you can control C or right click, copy it to the clipboard and then paste it into Altium and and through some finagling, that should get your logo in. Um, I'm gonna go pull mine in real quick. I once I got it in the first time, I basically um, I basically just 
copy it from other projects now. Um, but it's always good to have a logo. Logos are logos are fun. So I'm gonna go borrow my logo from here. And I can just control C that. And it's it always brings up a cursor. It's just asking where you want to copy something from relative to something. So I could, if I was putting this on another board of the same layout, I could click here. Um, and I'm sure I will. And it'll paste it relative to that spacing. It's pretty neat. So I'm going to paste that and I'm just going to stick that right there. Okay. And lastly, um, I think lastly, we're going to go up here and we're going to go to pad. And what I'm going to do is I hate that my panels do this layering thing. It's really annoying. Um, so I'm going to make a whole size. I'm actually going to do it in millimeter. Um, so I'm going to do 2.7 millimeter. And it'll automatically convert that to mil. And obviously, this is a goofy shaped board, but let's just pretend I have some places that I know I need mounting holes. Um, we can we can tie that to ground, I suppose. That would be fine. Um, and let's say I needed another one here. These are these are horrible spaces, but just bear with me and let's pretend that I actually want them that way. And let's tools, polygon pours, report all. And then let's save everybody. Let's go see. Yep, there we go. We now so now we have um, um, holes that are slightly oversized to fit um, easily fit M two point five uh, screws. Uh, 2.6 millimeter would probably work too. I go for 2.7. Um, consult someone who does mechanical stuff because I do not. This has worked for me in the past though, so that counts for anything. And one more fun thing, just as a quick aside, I've managed, um, you can find these. Um, notice that I don't have 3D model for everything. In fact, I'm missing a pen header here. So I can actually um, go to place 3D body and then I happen to have in my downloads a one by six pin header. And when that turns green, I can place it. And I find it's angry until you run a design rule check. You can run design rule check. And we have all sorts of errors and I'm not gonna go through them right now. Um, these are things you can go through by yourself, but basically the gist is I can click on one and it will tell me where the air, yeah, so these holes actually are, whoa, okay, are outside the size constraint I set in the rules. So I can go change the rules to fix that. Um, again, I'm not gonna worry about this too much right now. Uh, this is actually because of one of my footprints. So I'm going to choose to ignore that for now. I fixed it elsewhere, it just didn't get fixed in here. Um, so just automatic. okay. And actually, there's one thing you do need to know um, if you change a footprint. So if you've already placed it and you change a footprint, you go and compile your library again. Tools, uh, update from PCB libraries, update all footprints, um, validate, execute, okay. And it'll go through each one and update it with the library. Um, it'll update everybody unless you uncheck it over here. Um, but if you didn't change anything on a given footprint, it shouldn't matter. Uh, okay, so cool. So last thing we need to do, let's pretend we're done now, okay? Um, you obviously wanna review with your team, all that good stuff, but let's pretend we are done. So um, what we wanna do is now we need to generate Gerber files. And those are kind of the CAD files that you'll submit to PCB uh, Boardhouse. So go to File, Fabrication Outputs, Gerber X2, not files, not this one. You want this one. Um, this will pop up. Um, as annoying as it is, you need to check everything individually. And very important, don't forget to go over to drills and check all four of these. 
and then just hit OK. And it's going to create what's called a CAM file. Okay, you really don't need to give too much thought to this CAM file. You can save it if you like. Um, just save. And, but more importantly, now we're going to go to File, Export, Gerber. Okay. Just click OK. And then this, this will pop up. I'm going to want to give it its own folder. So, out, toot. And it's going to write all of the files to that folder. And let me go find it real quick and pull it up. Okay. Um, so there's that. And if we open that, we can see all of our Gerber files therein. Uh, if we, now we're gonna want to send to compressed folder. And it can have the same name, that's fine. Okay. And now I'll show you real quick. Um, I've personally become a fan of JLC PCB. I've had good experience with them so far. Um, typically on a two layer, normally this would be a two layer. It's, it's, it's pretty stinking cheap. Um, but so what we're going to do is we're going to quote this. Remember this should not be a four layer, but it is. Um, and then we're going to upload our zipped folder. Make sure it's zipped. Open it. And there's our lovely goofy shaped board. Um, looks pretty stinking cheap actually. Uh, and then, so it knows the dimensions, uh, the square dimensions at least. Um, we can change the quantity. Um, you can probably leave this alone, leave that alone, unless, unless that's important. You can pick a color. Um, they do add time. They don't charge extra, but they do add more time if you pick a different color. Um, other than that, you can leave everything else the same. The only thing that might change, uh, copper weight. Um, basically, it's, well, let's see, what does it say? Copper weight at the, or wait, uh, yep, 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 yep. So um, basically, if, if, if your top or bottom layer is gonna handle some, some oomph, some more power, pick two ounce. Otherwise, one ounce is fine. Uh, okay, and you can um, you can order a stencil if you're going to be doing um, solder paste application and reflow. Um, they do offer an assembly service, so that's pretty cool. Uh, but for our purposes, all we care about is this. Um, and from here, you just uh, you could choose a different board house, obviously. But um, here, you just uh, figure out the price. Um, I, if you're if you're going to use them, I would recommend going with uh, the DHL shipping. Um, yeah, DHL. It's it's more expensive, but it gets there real fast. You get good tracking, all that good stuff. Um, we're in you know we're at Texas A&M University. Once they ship it, I usually get it within three business days. So that's from China. So that's insane. Um, so yeah, you could there. I mean, there's there's the price, and then plus that's much much in shipping. So that's what you can put on your purchase order, and uh, and then uh, um, and then actually, if you're an ETID MXET, um, I have the account. The login uh, is is it's my account um, for this particular website. That's the official account we use for ETI or MXET and ESET. Um, so. Feel free to get with me if you need that login. Okay, um, I think that covers about everything I wanted to cover. Um, we got a pretty, pretty neat looking board here. Um, hopefully, this has been helpful in getting your feet wet with Altium. Um, um, if you have any, if if I know you, <laughs> and you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Otherwise, uh, feel free to leave a comment on these videos. Um, and hopefully someone, myself or someone else will uh, answer your questions. Um, I guess, I guess that's all. Have a good one.